there. So we need to check in with meteorologist Elisa Rafa to get you started this morning. Good morning, Elisa. Good morning, guys. We are starting out with some rain pretty much along and south of I-44 areas in central Missouri are more or less dry. We do have some heavy rain that's set up from Branson up towards Ava, Mount Grove and West Plains. Some locally heavy rain now in Diamond City. There's some reds there on the radar indicating that rain coming down pretty quick. So we do have an aerial flood warning for parts of Taney and Ozark counties because about two inches of rain fell very quickly this morning on saturated soil. So we're concerned about any creek or pond flooding there. Uh, up to the north, the rain is coming down much lighter, including in Springfield. Some pinks indicate maybe some icing, but uh, because temperatures are above freezing, I think any icing concerns will be minimal and isolated. It is 36 in Springfield right now. Mostly sunny by dismissal, 48 degrees there with that sunshine. If we time out this exit by about 10 o'clock, we dry out in Springfield. By about 2 o'clock, we dry out in the eastern Ozarks. Sunshine by the end of the day. Temperatures in the 40s today, overnight in the 30s, and beautiful 60s tomorrow with mostly sunny skies. This weekend forecast is just gorgeous. Gorgeous. Mostly sunny and warm, 61 on Saturday. A couple more clouds on Sunday, but still breezy and warm at a temperature of 64. We keep the warmer, mild temperatures through next week. We'll come down to the 50s, but that's still 10 degrees above average. Joe, Lauren. An ex-Missouri State University professor accused of the 2016 murder of his retired colleague has been deemed mentally unfit to stand trial. Edward Gutting is accused of breaking into the home of his former colleague Mark Cooper and stabbing him to death in August of 2016. After evaluation from multiple doctors, it was ruled that he is schizophrenic and unable to aid his defense in his trial. One of his attorneys, Dee Wampler, says until he is deemed mentally stable, they cannot rightfully try him for the murder. Whether or not he was crazy at the time, back in August of 16, has yet to be answered. He is schizophrenic right now. He needs therapy. He needs treatment. He needs medication. In the meantime, Gutting will be treated under the Department of Mental Health in an effort to restore his mental competency to potentially be put on trial. On to a follow-up story this morning. Springfield police say they think they know the identity behind the human remains found near Hillcrest High School on Wednesday, but they'll need to do a DNA test to confirm it. Police also tell us they're no longer investigating the death as suspicious. They can say they believe the person was between 30 and 50 years old, and those DNA tests could take some time. Two deadly crashes to fill you in on. The Highway Patrol says 69-year-old Gary Mills from Ozark was killed on US-160 south of Nixa after he hit a car that pulled in front of him. He wasn't wearing a seatbelt and was pronounced dead at a hospital. Near Rolla, troopers say 80-year-old David Potter died on Highway 63. A truck veered in front of Potter's car and both vehicles went off the road. He died at the scene of that accident. Around the Ozarks, the Webster County Sheriff's Office is asking for your help in locating a stolen six-foot-tall bronze statue. It's known as the Gunsmoke and Dusty Trail statue. Deputies say it was stolen in a burglary along with other items at a home between Northview and Stratford. Thieves got away with two other bronze lion statues, an antique shotgun, a 22 cowboy rifle, as well as an antique revolver. If you have any information on that theft, you should call the Webster County Sheriff's Office. After sending a request to the city of Ozark to remove a cross from city property, the Freedom From Religion Foundation is back at it. Now a lawyer in the organization has sent in a request to remove two pictures in the Camden County Clerk's Office. Those are a look at those pictures right there. One is a beam, a painting of two steel beams rather, in the shape of a cross with the date 9-11. The other has an American flag with the Bible verse John 15-13. The group says the images endorse a religion in a government building and that this violates separ separation between church and state. The organization claims one of the paintings is also near a ballot box. Color 10 reached out to the Camden County Commission for comment, but calls have not yet been returned. Around the region, a cave rescue kept crews busy in Newton County, Arkansas on New Year's Eve. The sheriff says a 28-year-old woman from Texas fell about 20 feet in a cave on private property in the northern part of the county. She was about 4,000 feet into the cave, had a broken arm and injured ribs from the fall. The woman was part of a group of experienced cavers. She was brought out of the cave about 26 hours after her fall. 
Some more local news for you now. In the Missouri State Legislature, several bills have been pre-filed ahead of the new session. Missouri Net reports Springfield Rep Curtis Trent has again filed a bill that would require changes to the statewide Amber Alert system. It's known as Haley's Law. You've probably heard of it after Haley Owens was raped and killed in 2014. And Springfield Representative Crystal Quaid is proposing a deadline extension to submit state income tax returns. Two rural counties in the Ozarks are asking residents to make your address more visible so responders can find you easier in an emergency. Both the Mountain Grove Fire Department and Pulaski County Sheriff posted tips on Facebook after struggling to find residences while on calls at night. They suggest having your address clearly visible on your home and mailbox. The bigger the better and a small light can help brighten the numbers or that can also work by using contrasting colors. New help is here for people fighting diabetes in Branson. Cox Branson is offering a free six-week workshop called Living a Healthy Life with Diabetes. It covers exercise, meal planning, medications, and other related topics. This goes on on Tuesdays from January 22nd through February 26th from 1 to 3 p.m. at the Cox Specialty Center on State Highway 248. The name of Springfield's indoor ice facility has returned to Jordan Valley Ice Park. That comes after the 10-year naming rights agreement expired with Mediacom recently. The name change also includes the Cooper Tennis Complex. That, that agreement generated about $200,000 for the park board, and new naming rights are now up for bid for both of the facilities. A traffic alert for you quickly here. Green County Route M will be closed tonight starting at 8 p.m. and will stay closed until Monday at 5 a.m. The closure will affect areas near Republic High, east of Green County Farm Road 103, while crews install water lines. Drivers will be able to get to driveways and entrances on either side of the work zone, but can't drive through the work zone, so you're asked to find alternate routes, but no signed detours are planned for it. Well, if you're looking for a creative way to start off the new year, you're in luck. The first Friday Art Walk of the new year will happen tonight in downtown Springfield. Even though university-sponsored galleries are not participating because of winter break, there are 16 locations, and several of those include some new debut exhibits. And we also have a few Google Trends happening this morning. Right. R. Kelly is trending because of a Lifetime series that uh, was on the air last night. It premiered, and there it will be a three-night total event, six hours total. And it spotlights the singer and portrays him kind of in a negative light, accuses him of some sexual relations with underage girls, interviews some people who were in his life at that time. I believe some of those victims also speaking out about that as well, mm -hmm. about and that, what's been happening. Yes, and that mm -hmm. will be on again tonight if you would like to watch it. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other trend that we'd like to tell you about this morning is, of course, Nancy Pelosi has been sworn in as the new House Speaker. Uh, the House is now controlled by the Democrats. We know they are working to come to an agreement on the border wall funding. Right. Partial government shutdown still going on. Uh, they're still going to be, they're going to meet again today. Mm -hmm. A bunch of lawmakers in the White House for the second time this week. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, Elisa, as far as the weather, we know we're starting off with rain this morning. Yeah, grab the umbrellas as you head out the door. 33 at the bus stop uh, with that rain. Mostly sunny by dismissal, so a drier second half with a high of 48. Gorgeous this weekend, 61 with sunshine on Saturday, 64 on Sunday. All right, everyone, enjoy your weekend. Thanks for starting your Friday with us. Have a great day.